Uh, I'm going to talk a bit more about the goals of the Northeast Hub and our vision and what we want to accomplish some logistics for the breakout sessions. We're also going to have Fen Zhao, who is the program manager uh, for, for, for the um, national hubs, and she's going to talk a little bit about the funding opportunity, the spoke solicitation, which just came out to give you some, some information when uh, you do the breakout session. So, could we go to the slides, please? All right, so you've seen before, we are uh, the Northeast Hub, relatively small, densely populated, um, and a large number of people already involved. I hope more of you will join. Our vision is to provide opportunities for data scientists um, to come together from different organizations across sectors. We've been talking about this this morning and across different disciplines to come together for collaboration. Um, I was very interested in listening to the panel that we just had and had um, a number of ideas about uh, directions that we could go. Um, for example, we have the opportunity uh, to get um, access to yet another source of funding, which is, would be specifically targeted towards increasing collaboration between uh, companies and, and universities. And so this panel gave a number of ideas. I'm going to follow up with the, with the people who were on it. For example, perhaps it could support um, interaction between industry and some of the um, smaller companies, which Claudia mentioned, like DataKind. This could be uh, an interesting possibility. Um, or to provide a platform for the Northeast where, where Yahoo might share their data like they did with CMU. So I'm putting words in, in people's mouths, but I hope we'll talk about this throughout the day. One main focus of the Northeast Hub is to be able to um, extract information from data and turn it into knowledge um, which can be used to solve problems. Uh, so this is a particular focus that we're interested in. We have specific goals that we specified uh, in our proposal with NSF. One was to hold workshops, um, and our plan is to hold uh, for each of those spokes and connectors to hold a workshop across the, the year. We have 10 of them right now. That may change. Uh, we're open to new spokes and connectors, uh, but that would give us 10, 10 workshops over the year. Um, we also have a goal of creating partnerships. And one criteria for success within our proposal is that we create 20 to 30 new partnerships um, by the end of the three years of the grant. Uh, we need to think about what a partnership is, um, what different kinds of partnerships we might, might be interested in. Uh, we heard um, some possibilities here, for example, um, you know, the, the small faculty grants that Yahoo and um, Google provide, but also the possibility of, of internships and interactions. So these would be things we could think about. Uh, we could have partnerships with government, uh, city government, in, in terms of, of sharing data. Uh, so these, these are things that um, we need to think about and decide how we're going to address. We have the opportunity to set the agenda for data science in the Northeast. So one of the questions for the breakout sessions really is, what are the important problems uh, that face society in the Northeast and that we have a chance uh, to, to um, make an impact on. Uh, so that leads into determining areas for societal impact. Um, another goal, facilitate cross-sector interaction. So between um, industry and universities, between nonprofits um, and universities. I think when we do a proposal, the universities rally round. Uh, the academia is used to doing proposals and coming together. The other parts of the, the other um, institutions are less used to this, and so we need to really think about how to bring them in. And finally, the hub 
uh, must become self-sufficient. Uh, so by the end of the three years, or we must have another form of, of funding so that we can support the hub as we continue on. And we'll be um, talking about different mechanisms to do that. We've talked about having a membership fee as, as one method. Some of the possible outcomes, would, which would be great if, if uh, we can do this, uh, a major one would be data sharing and collaboration with that data across the region. Um, if we could have a central access point for uh, different kinds of data. So for example, if we think of uh, data for, di for different kinds of cities across the region where we could um, integrate and have it together, then we would enable learning across different populations and different scales. So that, that might be one really good outcome. Um, health is another area where we might be able to aggregate data um, across different kinds of populations. and. Of course, we have to think there about the privacy issues, but I think that there's already research going on that um, perhaps we'll hear about uh, at some point during the day that will enable that. Um, workshops, but we really want to think about having workshops that spur these collaborations and projects. So we need to think about how to do them in a way so that we have actionable items that come out of them, actionable projects that, uh, that we can do. Um, tool development and sharing would be yet another really good outcome to come out of it. Um, there's often tools that are available uh, in research labs, but are not ready to be used at scale, and sort of um, further developing them and putting them out would be great. I'll tell you a bit about the organization of the hub. We have a steering three-part steering committee. It consists of the executive committee, which I've been referring to, and you'll see different members of the executive committee throughout the day. Um, an advisory subgroup and the task lead subgroup. Uh, the task leads are the heads of the connectors and the spokes. They are going to be leading your breakout sessions so you'll get a good chance to meet them and interact with them today. Uh, the executive committee, in addition to myself, Carla and Andrew, who you've already heard from, also includes uh, Vasant Hanavar from Penn State and Howard Walkler from CN CMU. And they really work closely with me in developing the proposal and since that time in figuring out plans for how we move forward. Uh, we meet, the executive committee meets every other week uh, by teleconference. Um, the steering advisory sub subgroup includes representatives from academia, from uh, industry, um, and from government. So on the academia side, we have representatives from Rutgers, Yale, Brown, SUNY Albany, uh, Princeton, and Dartmouth. Um, and uh, we have representatives from a nonprofit like Sloan, from uh, New York City government, um, from different kinds of uh, companies, so small one, FIXU, and uh, some that are in the computer science space, Microsoft and, and Facebook. And then we also have nonprofits, Pittsburgh Supercomputing Center and Mass Green HPCC. And I really thank all of these people for participating. Um, it, is a volunteer, it is a volunteer activity uh, for all of them. Um, so the role of the advisory group on the steering committee is to look at what the bylaws and organization of the hub will be to set policy, to set and, and monitor the agenda and government. So for example, the steering committee, the advisory group will be involved in determining which proposals we will provide letters of collaboration on and therefore which will go forward for consideration by NSF. Um, this is the organization of the hub. I showed it before to talk briefly about uh, the, the spokes. Um, the Northeast Hub will bring people together across these different sectors to address problems in areas uh, such as cities and regions, energy, health, finance, data-driven education, and scientific discovery. 
Um, we're looking at making use of large data sets and novel computational algorithms in order to tackle problems such as providing the right health care to the uh, individual patient at the right point in time, to reducing, massively reducing energy, uh, to supporting our aging infrastructure in the cities, and um, to transform how education is provided uh, to individuals. Um, our connectors are cross-cutting uh, themes. Um, they will interact with all of the spokes, and we, we've already begun to think about how that will happen. Um, they are looking at issues in how can we um, encourage data sharing across organizations, a big topic of the last panel. Um, when we have large data sets, uh, how do we deal with eth ethics that are involved in it? Um, privacy and security, of course, is important. How do we protect the rights of individuals? And then finally, how can we narrow uh, the digital divide between um, the groups of, uh, different groups of people out there to provide education for all? Um, you can still join. Um, this is the link to the website. Um, please uh, go there and you can send an email to the address that I have here uh, in order to join. So I'm going to turn it over to Fen now and when she's through we'll uh, talk about logistics for the breakout session. So I've been, I've been asked to give you some details about the spokes, but I, I think instead of giving you all of the, the standard NSF, I'm a program officer and here's the deadlines and here. All of this information can be found on the Spokes program webpage. There's a webinar that I've given that with slides that go into exact details of the different dimensions of it, the, the different timelines. You can take a look at that. There's a transcript and that's a full hour if you want to hear me talk or see my words on the page. I think instead I wanted to take a step back and give you the sort of really gut understanding of what a spoke is and what we envision the hub's doing um, outside of the, you know, 20 page solicitation that we've written. So when we talk about the hubs, NSF has used this term brain trust in our press releases. And I really do want to think about the hubs as a brain trust. It is a way of bringing a lot of people together from different perspectives with different resources or on collaborative projects and the ideation around collaborative projects. That's what the hubs are meant to do, is to run these workshops and to bring people together. And when you think about this, this is something that's fundamentally necessary for data science, um, but very, very challenging. Um, data science, we, we often use this term fourth paradigm for data science, right? You know, there have been, the previous paradigm was computational science. That was, that was the previous term of it. Computational science compared to data science is very different. Right, in terms of what are the partners you have to bring in. So the, the big challenge in computational science is you gotta bring a computer scientist in with a, with, a, with a domain scientist, your biologist, and this was the grand challenge. But in data science, it becomes infinitely more difficult because not only do you have to bring a, 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 a computer scientist with a data scientist to generate more things for a scientist, you have people who are nonprofits, who are for-profit data owners, who are local and state governments who own the data, who want to use the data, who want to work with academics to figure out what they're going to do. And so this as a mode of science, as a mode of discovery, as a mode of innovation, is way more complex than any um, thing that NSF has done before. And that's why we have the hubs, is to make sure that that kind of new uh, innovation and scientific progress and technological progress can move forward. And it's challenging because creating Intergovernmental, federal, state, industry, academic partnerships is not exactly something that is, is uh, organizationally easy, much less technically easy. So that's what, what the spokes are really meant to do and what the hubs are meant to do is, okay, now we have a mechanism where people can reach out and, and communicate and network and ideate. Now what can you do? What can, what novel, interesting projects can you start to initiate now that you have a mechanism for communication and ideation? And so when we think about spokes, um, we, we use the terminology in two different ways. There are spokes which are your hub subgroups where you come together and your task forces and you talk about and you do that ideation. Um, when I talk about spokes, I mean this new solicitation that NSF has put out to actually fund you to do something. <coughs> Right? And that something is to do a collaborative cross-sector project that is truly aspirational. 
right? Um, people think about NSF. Well, NSF is a research funding institution, right? You're funding fundamental research to go out there. Why, why are you funding spokes? One thing is, is that even though it's, it's a little bit more on the D side than on the pure R side, when we think of R and D, um, it is still meant to be novel. It is still meant to be aspirational. It's supposed to be something new that hasn't really been done before because it's organizationally challenging, right? We're asking you to, to take the uh, academic researchers, your academic researchers, to go work with industry, to go work with a, a, a nonprofit, or to go work with your state and local governments to put together uh, a truly, um, you know, this, this new version of what a project looks like in data science. Um, and so when you look at the spoke solicitation, and you think about this grand scheme that I've announced, you think, it's a million dollars over three years grand societal challenges with lots of organizations. So how do you measure that up? And, and a lot of people have asked this question, well, what, is it, what exactly does this solicitation support? And what we like to think of for the hubs is that it's a multi-phase program. The first part of the program was to fund the hubs themselves. The second part, this, this initial spokes period, is to fund sort of pilot projects. Right? Go out there and think, be aspirational, and think about a few pilot projects that you can bring other partners in and try to do sort of that first phase, that truly risky phase of bringing a lot of partners to see if you can get something to go off the ground. And then at the end of your three years of the project, then you think about sustainability. You, th you think to yourself, did it succeed? You know, did, did we, we, what we want to accomplish actually get done? And if it did succeed, then how do we actually uh, instantiate that as a, a technology we want to use or as a, a mechanism in the, the field that we want to think about in our societal grand challenge, right? Do we come back to NSF for more funding? Do we go to our, our mission agencies like NIH, if it's around health, if it's around energy, DOE, and get true like funding to build an infrastructure and bring the partners in in a more permanent setting? Or perhaps if it's a technology, is it have we taken enough of the first step that the private sector can come in now that we've mitigated some of that initial risk and then create a, a commercialized product from it. So, so that's sort of the sort of thousand foot view on what really the spokes are meant to be. It's a way for you to come together um, around project that you as individuals from individual uni um, institutions um, are just way out of your normal day-to-day -day, you know, life to do and say, you know, and be aspirational and say, you know, this would be amazing for my field. I can't do it alone. There's no way I can do it alone. I gotta bring in industry partners or I have to bring in academics or I have to get data from the, from the local government. So how do, NSF is there to try to fund that collaboration. Um, so when you go into your breakout sessions, I'd like to task you with, with a few things. One, go read the spoke solicitation, because I, even though I didn't talk about it, you should, you should go read it and find out the details about you know, the, the few dimensions, a few of the priority areas. Um, I didn't want to go into that because it would take a lot more than the five minutes that, that I was asked to give. But, but to think about you know, what are some, some really end goals that you would find valuable, whether you're an academic or uh, an industry person or a nonprofit, what are some outcomes that you think would be amazing for your field? And then think, what can I contribute to that, to that project, right? Um, whether it's knowledge, whether it's research capability, data sets itself, right? Some people that you can get involved, um, connections with regulatory um, officials, right? A lot of these things you, we've talked about really require that government interaction. So really, as you go into these breakout sessions, I'd lo love to see you coalesce around common interests, some common themes, and also just a, a, an idea of how to move forward. Great. Okay, thanks, Ben. So Ben will circulate among the breakout groups, so in a smaller setting, you'll have the chance to ask her more questions. Um, we have... Um, ask the task leads in the breakout sessions to consider these, these questions. They may modify them slightly for uh, the, their, your own area, but we want you to think about what societal challenges the spoke could take on that would build upon other efforts that are going on so that, you know, within this setting you can really make progress. Um, we, we would like specifics about the workshops that you want to hold, the topic that it might be on, who, who will take responsibility, when will it happen. 
Um, we'd like you to think about the kind of partnerships that you'd like to launch that would enable your spoke to successfully pursue the challenge. And we'd like you to think about what kind of resources you need from the hub, what kind of interaction should there be. And then uh, a number of you have already have submitted letters of intent uh, to the hub. I know that in, so we started off with a set of spokes that were, are all done on volunteer activity and there's likely to be some funded projects which are smaller than the whole scope of that spoke and multiple of them may have been submitted for each spoke. For example, for health, I think we got six. Um, so you can, I think it would be worthwhile for you to hear about the different proposals that were submitted for your spoke and <coughs> perhaps to think about whether any of them could be merged. Um, okay, so these are the breakout groups and what I am going to ask people to do, I'm gonna have the test lead stand and each group, uh, if you're going with that group, then you could stand and leave at that point in time. Um, just so just to, uh, we will have breakout reports. The breakout session will end at 2.30 and you'll have 15 minutes to get back here. Each report should be five minutes long. There is lunch outside. You should pick it up and bring it with you to your breakout group. So let's start with cities and regions. Constantine and Sanjay, can you stand, raise your hands? Uh, okay, they look like they're in the back over here. So people who wanna go for cities and regions, please stand and go out now. Others, please wait. Okay, next, could we have a Bonnie Patra stand? He's over here on the right. This is for the energy spoke. So could those of you who are interested in energy signed up for this breakout session, please go with a Bonnie um, Patra. So Bonnie, if you could go out the door here. Okay, our next breakout session is health. George Ritzak, who's here in the back. Could those of you who want to go to health please stand and go with George. I would ask the uh, steering advisory group to come to the front because you're going to be going with me, so you might as well come up to the front. Uh, let's see, our next group is finance, Michael Kearns. I'm hoping Michael Kearns is outside. So people who are in the finance group, can you stand and head outside um, and find your, your room that you should be heading to? Okay, big data and education. We have Bev, Bev Wolf and Ryan Baker. You can see them raising their hands. We'll go out the left door for big data and education. So if you're interested in that spoke, please head out now. Okay, Chris Hill is leading Discovery Science. Chris Stand and Manish Parashar. Um, so people who are going to Discovery Science, please follow Chris. He's going out this left door in the back. Okay, data sharing. We have uh, Sam Madden. Sam? Okay, Sam is here. All those interested in data sharing, please go with Sam out the door. You can again go to the left door in the back. Okay, um, ethics and policy. We have Jennifer Stromer Galley, Mark Latinero, and Karen Levy. Can you 
Okay, so we see uh, one of them here in the back. So ethics and policy, please head out the right door. Privacy and security, we have Adam Smith. Adam is right here down front. So people who want security and privacy, go out this left door here. And then education, we're having Katherine Kramer lead that. And um, so if you could join her and go out the right door for education.